Praise to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there anything in your life of which you are completely and utterly convinced is real and true? Anything in your life that you would bet everything, including your life, Is there something in your life that is something like that? Yes, one. Well, I believe that God loves me and that God will uh, die on the Jesus died on the cross for me and that my sins are forgiven. I don't have to do 20 hours of community service at the right time or something. I know that if I ask for Okay, so nice theological answer. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Sins are worthy. Yes. Anything else? The love of your children. The love of your children? Or the love of your children? Down is about there. Well, the world is round, so that makes sense. Okay, yeah. So really, when we think, we think of ourselves on a spherical earth, we are actually not standing up and down. We're actually standing at an angle, right? We're standing at an angle, but gravity pulls us and keeps us planted. But what we would think is up is really off kilter by so many degrees. And so when we think of which way is up, it really depends on our perspective as to where we are. Now, many of those things that you mentioned are true in your life. Let's take the love of Children. Children who love their parents and parents who love their children. Does that also include those ages between 11 and 28? No. Or we can take those out. Or maybe that those ages between 2 and, say, 4. It's harder in those days, right? Well, both ways. Because, of course, having a 12-year-old, almost 13, I'm beginning to hear a certain phrase 
quite a bit more. And now be ready for it. I'm sure none of you would believe that this person would ever, ever say this. They hang on to something because it hurts in such a way. But I'm sure I will not hear it the last time. Daddy, I hate you. <laughs> I must admit I have heard this before. Perhaps once or twice or more. Just yesterday. <laughs> what? children, have you ever heard from those lovely, sweet, glorious children that you have brought into this world? Have you ever heard that statement from them? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Now, sometimes a children's love of parent is difficult because, of course, you know, they're fully psychologically not developed quite yet. They sometimes have missing pieces that sometimes makes it difficult to accept direction and boundaries. But let's say us who are adults, as we look at our children and their wonderful smiling faces, have you ever thought to yourself, you know, I just hate my child. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it anymore. If it wasn't illegal, then knowing I would get caught. <laughs> Have you ever said that to yourself? Not even, maybe not even out loud, but perhaps inside. You may have thought this to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> when that child comes in wearing one of your new outfits covered in mud, chocolate, it's not so bad, right? You kind of laugh it off. But there are opportunities and times in a life in which you find yourself in relation to another where perhaps there may be a disagreement or a misunderstanding or a complete and utter knockdown, drag out conflict. Well, the reading we have today. Now, we look back into history as to wouldn't it have been nice to been in that first century church when everyone got together and they enjoyed meals together and they never had any problems because they didn't have furnaces in their churches because they didn't have churches. They just gathered together. There was no problems in that first century church. Why? Sometimes we begin to think that. Well, maybe we don't have to go back to the first century. Maybe just the church in the 1950s. Right? If we just could go back to the church of the 1950s, when things were just quiet and wonderful and society said, oh, yeah, we're going to have everything closed on Sunday, so don't feel like you're missing anything, go to church. And, of course, everyone seemed to go to church. As we look back, even into our own lives, right? If only we could go back 10 years or 20 years when life was just simpler. When we didn't have phones in our pocket or our purse. You know, where if we actually had to make a call, we had to sit in the kitchen. Unless we had one of those really long cords and we could go around the corner. Simple or simpler lives where there really wasn't a whole lot of conflict. Right? Wrong. We look at the 
disciples, we look at that first century church and we sometimes think to ourselves, you know, wouldn't it have been nice walking with Jesus for those three years, learning from Jesus himself. But the disciples never got into any arguments, right? Oh, wait. Man, Jesus right there. And they got into arguments. And why do we get into arguments? Why do we find ourselves in disagreement? Why do we find ourselves in conflict? As we are called together as the body of Christ. Well, it's because some of those things that weren't mentioned today, you still have within you. Things that you are completely and utterly sure of in your life. Things like, well, you knew sooner or later it was going to get around to food. Like perhaps a disagreement between thin sliced bacon and thick sliced bacon. Right? Most people wouldn't consider this a real argument, right? Unless, of course, you have a preference to thin sliced bacon or thick sliced bacon. Right, Neil? <laughs> right. <laughs> Neil doesn't like thick sliced bacon. I love thick sliced bacon. <laughs> what does it matter? of the bigger picture, you nailed it right. Yeah, it really doesn't matter for me. But for some people, this preference will create argument. If you try to put thick sliced bacon on their plate and they don't like it, they'll send it back. Say, how is the best way to make poutine? Right? It was just poutine we here in Calvary last, did you notice? It was poutine week. You people not get these emails about food like I do? <laughs> it was poutine week last week. And across Calgary, they had a poutine competition as to who could make the best poutine. Now, of course, some of these poutines were not what a purist would call poutine. For what things does poutine have in it? Potatoes. Potatoes? And, and how do the potatoes need to be done? Okay, they can be deep fried. Okay. PEI. <laughs> and that for PEI, you're really going to make it right. Gravy. And they need, okay, you need gravy. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. That, that's it? Okay, well, yeah. a purist would say those are the three ingredients that make up what poutine is. You have your potatoes, you have your cheese curds, and you have your bread, and it has to be brown gravy. That's pure poutine. But poutine week last week, there was some poutines that some people would say that's not poutine. Or it didn't have cheese curds, it had cheese sauce, and the potatoes were crisscrossed rather than sticks. And the gravy was not a brown gravy, but it was perhaps a uh, kind of a butter chicken gravy. Right? You would think that this would be not something to cause disagreement and conflict. <laughs> yeah. And there it is others that would say, oh yes, there is. I shall protest that this other stuff is on with you. It was also last week, International Beer Week. You don't get these emails, do you? <laughs> what three things are in beer?
It's just barley, yeast, and water. Purity law. Beer has three ingredients, plus a good poutine. Three ingredients. Anything outside of those three ingredients technically is not, according to the purity law, beer. It's some other beverage. Is this enough to start an argument? Yes, it is. And then we think to ourselves, why? Why do things such as this make us get into arguments because of the disagreement between one or two things? That's what happened in our text today. Some people said, I belong to Paul. Some people said, I belong to Apollo. Some people said, I belong to Christ. And they fought over it as to which denomination they belong to. Right? That's the beginning of denominations. Pauline, Apollos, or Christians. We can that disagreement because we identify in such a way with something think the other is wrong. We are so sure that we know the person that thinks differently is wrong. If you put pulled pork on your poutine, no matter how delicious it might be, it's no longer poutine. If you perhaps change from being a Christian that followed Peter. In other words, you have a Jewish background, and now you follow Peter because Peter understood what it meant to be a Jew becoming a Christian. He understood. So we follow Peter. Or perhaps you were more Greek-oriented, and so you followed Apollo. Or perhaps you were a little later in the system, and so you followed Martin Luther, or Calvin, <coughs> or the Wesley brothers. Or even today, in a world of faith, we have disagreements as to what it means to be conservative or progressive. We have discussions as to whether the Trinity should be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer. We have arguments whether or not the Bible should be written with male pronouns only, or inclusive language that changes the text. We have arguments over what it means in our faith to live our lives. And those who argue one side or the other are completely and utterly convinced that their understanding is correct. Now, the sermon is actually going to continue in the children's message. And as they come in, yep, you guys can come on in. We're going to continue because I'm going to give you the answer as to the one thing we can truly believe is true. One. Not which way is up or down. We've already just counted that one. Not what poutine is or what beer is. But those things change too. Come on in! They're waiting for Oh, they're all oh, they sell another person. We're gonna explore that one thing. And we're gonna see if the kids know what it is. A lot of times the kids know better than us who have thought about these things for a few years. Yeah. Are they ready? Yeah. Are they coming in? Yeah. Did they come? Come on, guys. Come on in. And you can come right on up here. Yep, don't even stop. Just keep coming. Keep right on up.
And now I've got to move the gamma. Good morning. All right, we went right from the sermon into this children's time because we were having a discussion as to what one thing we are completely basing our life on as true. What is that one thing that is true in life? Right. So it's not poutine and it's not bacon. What's the one true thing in life? Um, hmm? We love each other. Wow. Well, we had an answer of love and that we love each other. Do you think that that's kind of the one true thing? Death and taxes are the other things. Well, we can discount death and taxes, right? Because Jesus said, if we believe in him, we shall never die. Now what that means is a whole different thing. And then taxes, well, there are some places that you don't pay taxes. Or you don't, you know, if you don't want to, you may get in trouble, but you don't have to pay taxes. So really, even death and taxes aren't completely true. But I would say that love is the one thing that is true. Because it is that understanding of love that makes us think that when it comes down to it, it's not always just about me, right? It's not just about you even, or you, or you, or you, right? It's not, a, when we think and we come into that place of love, we know that it's not about us because love always makes us think about the other. Now, 2,000 some years ago, there was a man who lived a life that told us about love. And that one truth that even in those last days of his life, when he was being whipped, when he's being beaten and pushed around and nailed to a cross, he told us something, right? He told us that thing that is the ultimate truth in our life. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna sing it. So I'm almost ready to go. You're over 30, Pastor. Okay. You are 46. 
<laughs> it's a good thing that you're here to keep calm. <laughs> all right, so what do you think about it? That's right. Bamp is in the mountains. You have to drive there. Oh, that's a whole different discussion about traveling in time and going back in time. And that's right, because of quantum physics. Okay, well, we're going to, just before we pray, we're going to do one last thing talking about time travel. Okay. If any of you in your lifetime create time travel, what I want you to do well, is that machine or whatever that you use to time travel, I want you to come back to this morning. I built the time machine. Okay, if you build it, come back to this day right here, okay? So, in like the count of five, you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Uh, or you forgot. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, we'll try again another day, I guess. So we're gonna hold our hands. Nope, not yet. And let us bow our heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you love us, and that frees us to love you and everyone. Bless us, love us, and be with us. This we pray in your name. Amen. All right, Ms. Mark will collect your offering over there. Oh my gosh, you know And then you can head back to your seat. That's right. And in a low voice.